Hi everyone, James from TDB here bringing you another in between us. So today I will be drinking a 2022 Naka from Chen Chung Hao. I have this little brick here. Second time having this tea. Um, but first I'm going to talk about kind of what the purpose of this episode is and what I'm going to be trying to get from the session. Basically what I can, I'm trying to learn. Um, so as many of you know, I don't drink Young Poor too regularly. So this session is definitely aimed a little bit more towards learning and pleasure. And then it, this is something I'm definitely going to uh, put aside. Uh, you won't find me drinking too many young teas uh, without the purpose of just sampling or learning or maybe to bring on to an episode of TDB. And this one is no exception. It's definitely interesting, but uh, you know, for me at least, I prefer the taste of semi-aged and more aged poor. So I'm more curious about just learning about this tea uh, than I am uh, specifically enjoying it. Um, so these days I, I'm making that distinction a little more often than perhaps I did in the past. Um, so why this tea? Well, this one uh, is a area. Uh, Chen Chang Hao is one of those kind of like moderate big brands, not as big as Dai or Shaguan or even close to that. But they're definitely like a fairly well-known brand. They, they, uh, their their um, productions uh, mean something, uh, whether it's positive or negative. And they're really known for a couple different areas. Probably the most famous of them is Lao Ban Zhang, very famous for the Ban Zhang tea. But they also press tea from a couple of other areas and they make some blends. And I'm always curious about blends too. So, I mean, one tea that we brought on to a regular episode a couple months ago is the Ba Wang, the emperor is what they call it. And that's a fairly interesting blend. Definitely a lot of Bu Long in that blend. But they also press teas from places like Iwu. Their Iwus are interesting because they're not quite like super boutique-y. Um, like, uh, I don't know, a lot of those smaller Taiwanese outfits, um, but they're also not totally like the early Dai productions from like the 2000s, like Big Green Tree and stuff like that. So they kind of fit into this really interesting zone there. Uh, but another area that they're pretty famous for, and I did check back and we actually brought on their 2013 version of this, is the Naka. And these days, I believe they press it into 250 gram bricks. It's really not that expensive. Um, I think it's about, uh, this one is about 25 cents a gram. So you're running about that uh, that price range. Um, so uh, so it's not too bad. It's not priced in like their Lao Ban Zhang. So it's kind of in the mid range. So for those of you not familiar, Naka is one of the sub areas of Mong Song. It got famous for a couple different productions, but it's one of those areas where you don't necessarily see a ton of Naka productions. You can definitely find it. It's an area that is well known, but it's not like uh, Lao Ban Zhang in terms of like how often you see it mentioned, how often it's faked. Definitely possible to have some like fake Nakas and things like that floating around, uh, but it's not, um, it's not kind of like tier A or tier S for those. Um, it's definitely, um, so it's in the Menghai area and it's always interesting to try this sort of sub areas of Menghai that aren't like perhaps as well known as something like Bulong, uh, that really has kind of that stereotypical Meng Hai taste of like really brash upfront flavors. We'd certainly expect Monsong to be, uh, or Naka tea to have a little bit of that, but perhaps not as much as those areas. Uh, definitely more towards that area than like an Iwu tea, for instance, which is a little more subtle. So really curious just to try this, just because, you know, thinking back, I've probably tried under 10 uh, Naka productions. And so, yeah, it's an area that I've liked a lot of the tea from there. And I sort of associate it with a little bit less brashness than a Bulong tea, but, um, but kind of a nice mellowness. It's, it, for, so yeah, I, I'm curious to see how I find this versus kind of like those more uh, common areas to find. Anyways, I have already drank steep one and two. Here's steep number three here. Cheers. So definitely very green. Some florals running through it. Um, some bitter. Uh, hay, honey. Nice aroma coming off of this. I think this is one that Denny would appreciate the aroma. Um, the bitterness, I would say, is moderate. So it's not as heavy as something like you're going to get from a uh, really strong, like their, uh, for instance, their very expensive Lao Ban Zhang cake, or they make a bunch of those. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely not as bitter as those teas. So I would say it's definitely markedly more palatable um, as far as like smoothness than those teas. So I'd say for me and someone that has sort of my preferences, this is definitely like an ager, something that I would set aside. For at least, um, probably at, ideally like 15 years, but at least, uh, at least 10. 
and definitely one that, you know, if you can find it stored in Taiwan, Malaysia, those sorts of places, I think that would be uh, good for, for the storage. Um, it sort of splits the difference in a way. Uh, I'd say maybe it's slightly closer to Bulong than it is to Iwu, but uh, it's uh, definitely a lot more mellow and a lot more kind of uh, has some of the sweeter flavors going on uh, than, um, than some of those. It also has a nice aftertaste, and that's something it does share in common with some of the uh, Chen Chong Hao uh, more brash teas that they have. Even behind that brashness, there's like a nice sweetness that returns a Hui Gan. Yeah, and if I'm to judge this, I would say this lines up pretty perfectly for my image of what Naka teas are. There's a really famous 2005 white wrapper Naka that uh, White Titi uh, um, pressed. If, you, if you're curious about it, you can Google uh, See When Death by Tea's old blog post, uh, probably about 10 years ago at this point. So that one's very, very well known um, for that. And that one kind of had like these uh, somatic effects um, that people were talking about for a while. For me, at least, it takes quite a bit of, um, it takes very special tea for me to get the somatic effect. So it's not something that I'm necessarily getting from this. Uh, with that tea, even, uh, for me, at least, I found it to be pretty subtle as far the, as the somatics go. But flavor-wise, I would say this is kind of in the same vein as that. Um, certainly not as aged to that. That one was brewing kind of like this orangish color. But flavor-wise, I could definitely see this kind of moving into that trajectory. And that's a tea that I thought got overrated a little bit in terms of somatics, but underrated a little bit just as far as like a tea that tastes pretty good. Yeah, so definitely moderate moderate to heavier bitterness coming into it too. I think the longer I wait to, the bit more bitter it, it tastes. I did note on the first couple steeps that it did have like this very nice, pleasant honey sugar cane sweetness that lingers, and I can tell that that's coming now. So I think for people that do like to drink Young Tour, this is not a bad one. Um, and I think it'd be certainly an interesting compliment. I do recommend people check out some of the sub areas of Menghai County. Um, I do think it's worth being a little bit cautious when you get into kind of sort of like these smaller micro villages and things like that. Naka, I don't think is that small, but I mean, the fact that um, this is one of the areas that Chen Chung Hao is continuously pressing makes it interesting to me too. I think it's important to kind of focus on vendor specialties and things like that. So the things that they are choosing to press time and time again, um, I think that's interesting. And, and my understanding of it is they have some sort of a deal with the farmers over there too, uh, to get kind of get regular access to their uh, raw materials. So anyways, we will make steep number five. It's still pretty strong, so we're going to keep the steeps definitely pretty short here. I think it's still picking up some steam, judging from the color there. Um, yeah, this looks like maybe even the strongest of the steeps. Aroma pretty strong still for steep number five already. And definitely one um, I'm not going to pound, so this will probably be the last one I drink on camera. Cheers. So yeah, bitterness growing each steep. Uh, it's probably about five grams for 70, 75 milliliters here. So probably would not pass something like the mom test. If you're not a fan of young poor, uh, this tea is squarely in that. This is not a gateway young poor like some Iwus are. Uh, so definitely for people that like strong tea. In fact, the bitterness is growing, but it's definitely a kind of like the more typical pure bitterness rather than that kind of aspirin bitterness that you can get. Uh, and you can definitely get some of that aspirin bitterness in some of their productions. Uh, I've noted it uh, kind of blended into the Bawang Emperor blend. Um, I do like how they use that when they do have it in, but this one is definitely more typical. Um, so yeah, I'd say overall a pretty decent one. So definitely has that bittersweet thing going on here. Uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Let me know how you like this episode. Let me know if you've tried the Chen Sheng Hao Naka. I think uh, for the price, it's definitely like a, a pretty, like if it sounds interesting to you, I think it, I, I think it's worth a try for sure. Um, so yeah, thank you to the folks over for, at Chen Sheng Hao. Um, they've uh, sent a lot of uh, free samples and things like that in the past. So appreciate that. Um, and, uh, I think it's always interesting to try their tea too, because it's a brand that's not focused on, uh, selling to the West. Um, but, uh, they do happen to sell to the West too. So it's pretty easy to get access to those teas. So anyone can go onto their website and really, 
uh, order, uh, at least based in North America. I'm not sure about Europe or things like that. But anyways, I am rambling. So thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all next time.